Yo, what is up my empathic ninjas and warriors and welcome to another episode of Love Over Narcissism. I am your boy, JC Desmond, and in today's episode we're going to talk about the smear campaign. Haha, <laughs> lots of fun. Now, um, why do narcissists smear their victims? Um, for those who don't know, um, a smear campaign is when basically like, you know, the narcissist goes around playing victim and telling uh, everybody else in your social circle or whatever or their new sources of supply that you were the abusive one and that the uh, relationship ended because of you and you were the problem. And, um, you know, they, they do this to basically destroy you. Why do narcissists smear their victims? Oh, by the way, please like, share, subscribe, comment, all the necessary things to support a YouTube channel. I really appreciate it. And um, so moving on, why do narcissists do this? Um, Well, think about it. You go through the love bombing phase, right? They love bomb the shit out of you. They make you feel all sorts of wonderful. And then they go through the devalue phase. And in that devalue phase, they do everything like, you know, put you down, um, manipulate, gaslight you. Uh, They probably cheated on you. Um, All these things to you know, tear down your spirits and to destroy, to essentially destroy who you are. And while the narcissist might play victim in all this, they know exactly what they're doing. They know that they're hurting you. They know that they are actively tearing you apart emotionally and mentally. They know what they're doing. So when they are setting you up for that discard, and they know it's going to happen. They always know it's going to happen because narcissists never get into relationships for uh, love or connection. They get in for supply, for that validation, for fuel. So why do they smear? Because they know that at some point, leading towards the discard, you're going to be hip to their bullshit. It's just plain and simple. You know they're going to be hip. You're going to be hip to their. Bu- they know you're going to be hip to their bullshit. Ugh, I keep jumbling up my words. They know you'll be hip to their bullshit, and they know that after a while, once you become hip to their bullshit, they know that you're going to be angry and you're going to want some answers, or you might even want to lash out um, or want revenge. So they see that as the perfect opportunity to play victim and to smear you. Um, my ex-narcissist, who, uh, for the sake of anonymity, I will not mention her real name, but let's just say her name is Carla Fagan. Carla Fagan. That's what I will say. <laughs> uh, she used to tell me all the time that her ex was a narcissist. Because she would, act, she would act weird. She would give me the silent treatment, and then she would go cold. She would go warm again, then she would go cold, then she would blame me for stuff. And she said that the reason why she acted like that is because of the post-traumatic stress dis- that, that, that her ex-narcissist put her in. She also told me things like, oh, my ex-narcissist tried to poison my water. That Tried to poison her water, y'all. I mean, you know, it, just stupid shit like that. And uh, the more I started, like, you know, the more I started getting to know this piece of shit, Carla Fagan, shout out to you, piece of shit. Um, The more I started getting to know this piece of shit, the more I started realizing that she's the problem. I would hang with her and see the way she acted towards, uh, you know, waiters and waitresses. I would see the way she acted uh, when I was at her house one time and the landlord had sent somebody over. And she would just be absolutely nasty to whoever was coming to the house to, you know, to collect rent or whatever. Um, I'd seen the little manipulative things, manipulative things she's done, the way she treated the superintendent of that house. She even got me to, you know, to the point where she, you know, she convinced me somehow to, you know, almost beat the guy up. Meanwhile, these people were hardworking, uh, people, hardworking people, but she messed with them all the time. Why? Because, you know, she needed to make them look bad. She needed to look like a victim and eventually, she even got her rent lowered. They do all this so that they can, you know, shift the gears in their favor. 
You know, they smear your name because they want everybody to feel bad for them. If people feel bad for them, they'll have a new support system or they'll have a bigger support system. And that support system will constantly fuel them with the supply that they need, all while at the same time destroying you in the process, which will also fuel them with the negative fuel that they love. It seems like they love negative fuel a lot more than they love positive fuel. But that's the reason why they smear. They also know that if they are figured out and people see right through them that everyone will absolutely turn their back on them. And they can't, they can't afford to have that mask removed because the mask is all they have. They can't afford to be seen as a narcissist. They can't afford to have that happen because then they're going to have to go into hiding. And then eventually, when enough people find out their bullshit, just like Carla Fagan... Um, and a lot of people in my social social scene know Carla Fagan and know that she's full of shit, so she hasn't come out at all. But what they'll do is, if enough people figure them out, they'll eventually just uh, you know up and leave and go to another social scene. They'll disappear and they'll start a whole new social circle, a new social scene, in which they will start their uh, cycle of abuse again. They'll find a new source of supply to to you know to feed that victim uh, story to, and they'll keep doing it, and that's the cycle that they go through all the time. It's really hard to find new sources of supply. I don't want you guys to to think that you know, hey, you know, oh, boom, we broke up. New source of supply. No, they might be grooming. Somebody never, but like, but if it's an unexpected discard or you discarded and and went no contact, they're reeling, you know, they're suffering from that. So they got to find new sources of supply. So that smear campaign is set up to make you look like you're going crazy. And you know what? Everything they do, everything they do is calculated. They do all this abusing, all this gaslighting so they can eventually make you go crazy. So then when it's time to discard you, you're going to be left there like, what the fuck just happened? And when they start spreading this story of how you abused them or how you treated them like shit, guess what? They're going to create some new flying monkeys. People are going to start looking at them like, wow, you know, I mean, all the things that he or she have went through and, you know, I'm here for you. And they're going to have a big support system and people are going to start to look at you like you're crazy. That's exactly why they do this. All this for the supply. Fortunately, in my case, in the case of Carla Fagan, um, right before the final discard, which was done by me, I was actually contacted by numerous people. And I'm talking about like over 20 people that told me what this piece of shit really is. Former ex-boyfriends of hers, Former friends, um, we are heavily involved in the salsa scene, the salsa community in New York, and former dance uh, uh, teammates, because she was on a dance team, shout out to you Carla Fagan, Um, people just came hitting me up and telling me this woman is no good, is a piece of shit. So fortunately in my case, she's already been figured out a long time ago. And so me starting this channel was kind of the nail in the coffin that, you know, put her through the worst narcissistic injury she's ever been dealt with in her entire life. And shout out to you, Carla Fagan. I'm really happy for you. You really totally deserve all that bullshit and all the hiding that you're going through um, because, as I said in a previous video, you are a vile piece of shit. And you are a vile human being. Nobody respects you. You're a, you're a person who whores your body off for supply. You whore yourself off for that payment of supply. Nobody respects you. So in my case, I was lucky because people had already seen through the bullshit. But if people don't see through the bullshit and they start to smear your name, listen, don't, don't defend yourself to anybody. Don't defend yourself. You know who you are. Your people know who you are. Your real people know who you are. And if this person wants to go around and smearing your name and everything, 
you don't need to defend yourself. You just move on with your life. Be happy. Your whole The whole objective is to get away from these pieces of shit people. Move on with your life. Be happy without them and kick some ass. That's it. You don't need them in your life. Um, they've never loved you. And trust me when I tell you, you've never loved them. You've only loved the facade that they put forward. You don't love them. Okay? If you get people coming to you, I mean, you know ridiculing you and everything, just cut these people off. If they're so stupid that they're going to be convinced by a pathologically narcissistic person that you're the bad guy when this narcopath has basically proven that they were pieces of shit, oh, you don't need them in your life. Fuck them, you know? You just move on, you kick ass, you be happy, you do what you got to do. Trust me. All the smearing they do, the moment you start letting go and start living a great life where you're kicking ass and you're moving forward, you are going to absolutely murk the narcissist. Like, it will kill them. They just won't be able to stand how you can stand up and say, well, fuck them, and kick ass in life. That's what you got to do. When they smear your name, say God bless them and just move forward. You know what I mean? In my case, well, you know, I started this YouTube channel, so I'm going to constantly mention my, my, uh, my story about the narc. Shout out to you, Carlin, uh, Carla Fagan. Shout out. Uh, and I know it absolutely just destroys her internally. But, you know, hey, fuck it. You know, she's been exposed. That smear campaign won't work on me. It won't work on you either if you just ignore it because a lot of times... Uh, most of the people just want to watch the train wreck happen. <laughs> if you act the way where you're just moving forward and you're focusing on you and you're happy, you'll look like the least crazy of the two and your narcissistic piece of shit ex will look like an idiot. So understand why narcissists smear their victims is because ultimately they don't want to be figured out. They need that source of supply. They need people to constantly validate them. If people found out who the narcissist really is, they'll lose that supply. And if they lose that supply, they could even lose their life. Like, these, these people are crazy. Like, you know, I, I've heard of cases of narcissists killing themselves when they couldn't secure that supply. It's, it's crazy. Just be grateful that you are not in that mindset that be grateful that you are not living the life that the narcissist lives yes you might think that they're living a great life and all they're really not they they have a shitty life they're unhappy every day they wake up feeling worthless and 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 are desperate it's like an animal in the wild you know they never truly know when they're going to get their next meal so they have to constantly hunt and eat the most that they can in one shot in order to feel sustained and that's what the narcissist has to do they have to always try to feel sustained it's the closest they could come to feeling happiness is feeling sustained because they never feel happy and if they lose that supply if they lose the support of the social circle oh oh my god the result will be will be just <laughs> will be magical in my eyes but it'll be catastrophic to them that's the reason why they smear they have to always look like the victim. When they look like the victim, people will feel bad for them. People will do things for them. People will, uh, you know, will, will invite them out to go hang out, to go dancing, to do this and that, whatever. They'll befriend them because they feel bad. And if they look at you like you're the psycho, well, guess what? You know, they'll, uh, they'll cut you off. That's exactly what the narcissist wants. It's all, and it'll all add up to giving them the ultimate supply. Cut off that supply. No matter what they say, no matter what they do, continue to stay in no contact. And as long as you stay in no contact, you're the winner. It's just that simple. You know? You know you have them figured out? You're the winner. Trust me. It's enough that they know that you have them figured out. And it scares the shit out of them. And it even scares them to run into you when they know that you have them figured out. They don't want the rest of the world figuring them out either. So, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed enjoyed this episode um please like share subscribe i uh, hope you guys uh, resonate with this video um and uh thank you for the support once again love yourself respect yourself love over narcissism baby let's go
Peace.